Hey guys, what is up and welcome back to the channel. In this video, we are going to be taking a look at the brand new shader caches, which are right now available for everyone to use in the very latest Canary versions of Yuzu. You need to make sure to have your Use Disk Shader Cache option turned on in the Graphics tab, and when you load your game, you can see this awesomely sleek loading screen for the loading of any of your transferable or pre-compiled shader caches. A little bit later on in this video, we're also going to be taking a look at an absolutely huge development which has taken place over at Xenia Emulator where they have basically fixed all of the graphical bugs in relation to the emulation of Red Dead Redemption. Sticking to Yuzu for now, look at how absolutely awesome that transition was. The fade in especially is such a really really nice touch and massive praise and all the credit for not only the implementation of this shader cache but also the user interface to show that it is indeed working has to go to Rodrigo and indeed J Roboy for all of their awesome work over the last four to five days. They really have been putting in tireless work to get this out and available for all of us to use and have much better experiences in all of our games on this Nintendo Switch emulator. We're now going to load into game. I believe I should be in Sand Kingdom where I'm going to show you just how well this brand new shader cache is currently working. Now, as happens to pretty much everyone, the very first time you load into your game, you're going to be getting a surface flush lag, which is, I believe, what happens when you load into a level and it has to like load all of the assets from said level and you should see it stabilize in a few seconds you see i'm at 34 frames per second it should just jump up to 60 frames per second and there you go you can see it's now at 60 frames per second and my game is buttery smooth now you are going to notice we're going to get some kind of a little stuttery pauses and that's not actually related to shader cache compilation and in just one minute i'm going to show you how you can debug these problems for better potential reporting and indeed logging of issues for the future of this emulator's development. But again, back to gameplay, you can see that since I have completely built a shader cache for the entirety of Super Mario Odyssey, I am not going to get any shader cache compilation stutter in relation to what I do and what actions I perform in gameplay. Let's move over to this little mound, do another ground pound, and try to get ourselves yet another power moon. So there we go, there's our power moon. And now I'm going to show you how you can report logging and how you can find out exactly what is affected your performance in Super Mario Odyssey or in pretty much any game you see or play on this emulator. So as you can see when I perform a ground pound I don't know if it's going to be too noticeable to you guys but I am getting some stutter. If you come to the view tab, debug and open this micro profile and within the micro profile groups tab you want to select all and then come across to timers and select exclusive timers. Once I do this, I generally like to minimize these windows just so it's only the information being displayed and I'm just going to drop this down into the bottom left hand corner of this window so you guys can see more clearly what I'm talking about. So you can see when I perform a ground pound, I am getting what is called SVC or kernel lag. Now I'm not exactly sure what causes this, but in the future, if you are reporting any issues or see any kind of performance degradation in Yuzu emulator in any of your games, the best thing that you can realistically do is to get a version of the emulator that was previously working very well for you, open up this micro profile just like I've shown you right now and then you'll be able to compare any differences you can see in this micro profile between any two different versions of Yuzu emulator you wish. Hopefully these SVC issues can be debugged and fixed very very soon. Hopefully once they do, Super Mario Odyssey and indeed any other game that suffers from this exact same issue is going to be absolutely buttery smooth in gameplay. Let's now jump across to Xenia Emulator and take a look at Red Dead Redemption. So if any of you guys told me one week ago that Xenia Emulator was going to become the definitive and best place to play Red Dead Redemption, I probably would have straight up laughed in your face, but having seen all of the unbelievably exciting work put in by Triangle, one of the main developers in the last four to five days alone, it is absolutely outstanding and nigh on unbelievable. The 
progress they have made not only in the performance of Red Dead Redemption, the visuals of this game, but also in many, many other games which I'm going to be covering in some compatibility updates in the coming days. So in this video we're going to be taking a look and very clearly so at these improvements we've seen in the last, probably the last day or so and as you can very clearly see in gameplay they have basically completely fixed all of the graphical rendering issues in relation to plants, grass, flora and fauna that we saw in my improvements video from only one day ago. If the graphical improvements weren't very obvious to you in that rendered cutscene, you can very very clearly see them in gameplay in Armadillo right here, where you can see that these black box outlines, being the transparency on the edges of all of these plants, have now been completely fixed, giving us absolutely awesome render quality in Red Dead Redemption. Moving a little further in the gameplay and taking an excursion to the outskirts of Armadillo, you can see just how massively the render quality of Red Dead has improved on Xenia emulator in just the past one day. Not only has transparency now been completely fixed on all of these plants, but it has also been fixed on every single tree. You can see along the horizon here in the distance, there are strange blocky outlines on all of these trees, and in this brand new build labelled after, you can very clearly see that this has now been completely fixed, giving us an absolutely huge visual upgrade to this title. Visual upgrades aside, since I last covered this video in my 60 frames per second video, and yes, if you were not aware of it or if you didn't see that video, Red Dead Redemption is in fact going to be playable eventually anyway at 60 frames per second using Xenia, this Xbox 360 emulator, something that has never ever been possible in the life cycle or lifespan of this game, be it on the Xbox 360, Xbox One or indeed the most powerful gaming console ever, the Xbox One X. So while the Xbox One itself is able to run this game at 1080p 30 frames per second and the Xbox One X is indeed able to run this at a very impressive 4K 30 frames per second with further optimizations and future upgrades to this 360 emulator, we may eventually and I can very definitely see us running this game at 4K 60 frames per second at some point in time in future. Hopefully over the next few days I'm going to be able to, as I've already said, do some more compatibility testing for many other games on this emulator and I also want to make a video comparing both the visual fidelity and obviously the performance differences between running Red Dead Redemption on RPCS3, an emulator for the PlayStation 3, and this one Xenia. I am very very interested to see what kind of visual differences there's going to be between the games because if you weren't aware of it, the Xbox 360 version of the game was actually significantly better looking than the PlayStation 3 version, not only in resolution but also in foliage density and it also had several different graphical enhancements. For example, it had much greater shadows, level of detail and a much much higher draw distance. I am personally very very excited to see the results of those videos and I will hopefully have them live on the channel over the next few days. So for the remainder of this video, I'm going to be leaving you with this little graphical comparison to show you just how much the graphical rendering has improved in Red Dead Redemption on Xenia from the build just yesterday to the build right now today. As always guys, if you want to help with the development of any of the emulators, either Yuzu or Xenia, you will find links to their respective Patreons down in the description of this video, so please, if you have any spare money and only wanted to donate for one month alone, every single little bit of a donation is very very welcome and really it does help with development in the long run. Once again guys, cheers for checking out this video, I hope you found it as informative to watch and as fun to watch as I found to make it. Remember to like it if you liked it, dislike it if you didn't and as always subscribe to the channel if you want to see all future videos from me. What I mean to say Jenny is that there is a great deal of difference between an innocent and a savage. I never thought of it that way. Yes, they lived like animals, but they're happier now. Oh. <laughs>
only do people now have motor cars, Father, but I heard that pretty soon we will be able to fly. No, only angels can fly, Jenny. No, no, apparently people can fly. Didn't you hear? Out in Kansas, a man even got a car to fly. <laughs> I hardly think so, Jenny. Apparently, Mr. Johns wants to run for governor, which is why he's so concerned with cleaning up the state. Nate Johns. Yes. His family is nothing but hillbilly trash that came here after the war. I don't want to be judgmental, but this state should not be ruled by such a disgusting family. A family without class. Apparently. The Johns family have made a lot of money, and he has a lot of friends in politics. Mrs. Bush, money isn't everything. There are many things that money cannot buy. It seems that money can buy voters, though. What you must remember, my dear, is that we have been brought here to spread the word. And the word and civilization, they are the same thing. They are the gifts. It is the opportunity we have, the chance to live among people who are decent and who do not kill each other. And who let you worship in peace. Uh, it, it's so confusing, Father. Sometimes I find it impossible to make the distinction between a loving act and a hateful one. I mean, they often seem to be the same thing. Yes, Jenny, it, it is confusing. But you only have to ask me if you need help. Indeed. Well, here we are, Mrs. Bush. Armadillo. 